Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh to some and peace out to the rest of you. You already know who it is and who it ain't. It ain't your boy and it is your man. The blackest hearted, blackest minded, blackest man on social media signing black in and shining again, asking you to hit the mother cuss word share button because the message is more important than the messenger. That being said, first thing, I want to give a shout out to a new subscriber whose name I know. I've got a few of them actually. I just went above 2,400 subscribers uh, in the last, I think in the last week, finally cleared 2,400. Um, and as a matter of fact, I think 48 hours ago, I was at 2,411. So I'm not really sure exactly how many I've got right now because uh, I'm not sitting at the laptop yet. I'm moving around my abode, but... Um, the one whose name I know is Alexis Moore. He said he joined about a week ago. He's one of several that uh, have got me over 2,400 subscribers. And I want to thank you all. And as I've said before, most importantly, hit the share button because that's how others will benefit. The other thing too I wanted to point out uh, well, the reason that I started this recording is to ask you all about a particular video again coming out on the part of Mr. Samuels. Now, Mr. Samuels' name must be mentioned a lot lately, something I have to do because what we're seeing here is an actual transformation, if we're honest about it. That's why I keep mentioning it. That's why I keep having to say, mentioning him, I keep having to say his name because of the transformation that we are now witnessing. We've watched it for a long time. We watched a transition in the beginning and the transition was when he started to tell the ladies what they needed to hear based on what they're asking for and their expectations in conjunction with um, in conjunction with uh, what they're willing to offer in exchange. Now, this is funny. He has a video up. He posted it 15 hours ago. It's already gotten 225,000 views. It is entitled, Are Men Losing Hope in Modern Women? Part Two. And that is where he's talking to that second therapist uh, who he starts off by telling her, I caught you lying. I'm looking at your Instagram here. You lied about your dress size. The one that refers to herself as a serial dater. I want you to look at that video, 46 minutes and 20 seconds in. That is when he says something that I have been telling us for a few months now, actually maybe over a year. When she says, hopefully we can do better collectively, meaning black people, he says, no, 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 we're not going to put this on black men. This is not a 50-50 thing. This is something for black women to fix. He just recently got through saying that uh, you can't find a man that is a celebrity or uh, known to be successful in his field endorsing the MGTOW lifestyle and Leonardo doesn't count because he never endorsed it and, and MGTOW just adopted him. Let me explain to you. He just said this a few months ago. And then he said in the Joe Budden podcast that there are men that don't want to compete. As time goes on, the more it goes on, the more one-sided he understands that we must be because the more one-sided he sees it being this is not on us we do not share accountability with them as i have said 
Our accountability is completely different. We are wrong only because we made it too easy. And whoever sat around and told us to be a challenge to them anyway. Even now, the women calling in are calling in to ask him how they can all somehow manage to stand out enough from each other to where each one of them can get the same few men that they all want. Those are the men who can break their hearts. Those are the only men who have broken their hearts because those are the only men who can break their hearts. No one else has that much importance to them. We already know the average woman will not give a chance to the normal average man. Matter of fact, now the mediocre below average lowest lame won't give a shot to the normal average man. We know this is the case. We understand that this is the case. And he's seeing this more and more as time goes on. And as he tells women the things they need to know, they just keep balking and fighting him. They won't just say certain things. And this does have a lot to do with the way they communicate. I mean, I even had to tell my lovely, lovely wife some things. Just today, she asked me why I keep answering her with this really short, tense tone of voice. I told her because you call my name with a short and tense tone of voice. Frankly, several times you called my name. Not only are you interrupting when I'm doing something, but more importantly, you sound like you just might have been hurt or something, or like you're scared. I'm mirroring your tone of voice when you call me. So if you think I'm tight and, you know, tightly wound, high strung, and it, that's because that's how you sound when you call me. Some of it, yes, has to do with the fact that you're preparing for an event, you're decorating. I'm on vacation, I don't want to do any of this stuff but I'm willing to help you. However, most of it has to do with the way that you call me. Black? That's not your normal voice. I've had to have that discussion. We don't communicate, the genders and generally, uh, the genders generally do not communicate the same. I get that. But additionally, We men have to understand that I want some of you select, super select guys who largely have become red pill aware and this sort of thing. I want you guys to understand some things too, though, just to be on the safe side for your own benefit. I want y'all to understand something. You gentlemen may not have really had to deal with how these women communicate um, to the rest of us. You see, when we try to say things to them, we ask them certain questions that are important to us. The way that they say that we men don't really answer them very well is actually the way that these women don't answer us very well. Like, what do you want in a man? Well, I, I want a man that's got that oomph, you know? They start making sounds that don't have meanings. And I've told you before, when women do this, this is a sign that it is war. Then they turn around and they say to you, what are we? Let's put a label on our relationship. What are we? And you don't know them that well. And when you're trying to tell them, well... Here's what I need to know. Then they start interrupting you and, and, and they just make it an argument. That's how they communicate. Now, a lot of super select guys have not had to deal with this because the women aren't going to put these challenging questions to them and risk running them off because they're super select. They can have as an F buddy women that the rest of us would not be able to attain um, until, of course, they've already gained weight and had other men's kids. This is everything that we need to know. So you see these therapists uh, sometimes look at Mr. Samuels as he asks a question and then they start, well, they start trying to beat around the bush or give these other answers or qualify the answers when he needs to know something very straightforward and simple. Now, 
I've dealt with something from a lot of women. Most of the women in my life, the, the good ones too. I found that they have this tendency to ask things not only that you don't know, but to ask things you can't know. And they just do it in fucking sessantly. Pardon my, pardon my German. They do this a lot. Thinking out loud. Where did I, did I bring my keys with me? Where did I put them? Where is my phone? How the F could somebody else know what you did with your possessions when they weren't looking? This is annoying as hell to any man when you do this incessantly. A lot of men overlook this, but this is annoying as hell. The ways that we communicate are not the same. I have to sometimes interrupt the same way Mr. Samuels does. Even to this day, I have to do this. And I'm one of the lucky ones. I am a lucky husband. But there are times I have to say, excuse me, my question is this over here. That's my question. Did you see? And my answers, my, I mean, my questions are easier to answer. Because the first thing I want to know is, is it possible for you to know this particular thing before I ask? I factor in, could she even possibly know? So I don't say, where did I put my phone? I, I might say, did you see it lying around? Because she may not be able to know where I put it. She may have simply never seen it. That's the difference. We men communicate thinking. Women simply communicate thinking out loud. And I want you gentlemen to understand uh, that you're not the only one going through this. The ones of you that don't go through this are the only ones not going through this. That's how it works. But there's something else, too. More importantly, I want you all to understand that this is why it is that we need to be more. I mean, we have to be one sided and stick with the one sided narrative for this reason. Even the men who are not endorsing it in the beginning and they're calling it childish and they want to point fingers at us like what Mr. Samuels has done even recently are coming to understand. No, this is a very one sided problem. The men who have caused whatever heartbreaking trauma from which these women are complaining, a very few, far between, small in number. They're the only ones who could have left so many hearts traumatized, and frankly, I don't even think they chose a lot of these broads, and that's what a lot of their trauma is, is, is from. So stick with the one-sided narrative. You will be vindicated. She will vindicate you and prove you right. Thank you for listening. Black heart, black mind, black out. Asalaamu As Alaikum and black heterosexual non-select male power just because they don't like it and black patriarchy until extinction or judgment day.